Hi, thank you for making time today to join this conversation. My name is Shankarshan and I'm a volunteer at the COVID Credentials Initiative, which is also called CCI. So what I'm going to do today is share our experience in creating what we call a template governance framework around digital and technology interventions to the COVID pandemic. Now, if you were attending the blockchain panel that happened last Monday, you would have heard Brian Bellendorf remark on how governance framework is an important part of deployments. And here, through our conversations, we might actually see why they indeed are very important as we deploy these technologies to real life situations. So CCA came together as a loose coalition of interested and enthusiastic individuals, organizations, around 300 odd individuals, 100 odd organizations way back in April 20s, 2020, so the early days of the pandemic. Since then, very recently in December uh, 2020, CCI has become part of the Linux Foundation Public Health and continues its advocacy for privacy preserving verifiable credentials and uh, with focus on mitigating the spread of the pandemic and Incidentally, through evolving conversations, we are also looking at beyond this current pandemic as well. Uh, it's a quick rundown of things we're going to discuss today. Um, so the COVID pandemic, if you remember, uh, COVID-19 was declared as a pandemic sometime around mid-March. And uh, pretty much immediately, there was a number of conversations in various forums about how to blend technology interventions, bring technology as solutions create an impact. Uh, designing technology interventions around health status, uh, COVID test results was around enabling individuals to have access to services, businesses, basically trying to get back to what we then used to call the normal. But it also soon included topics of digital passports, vaccination status, and even there's a whole good body of work around electronic health records, including data sharing, what the CCA effort did was it brought together people in domains of identity, uh, self-sovereign identity, uh, technology, public health services, to be able to figure out how there is element of notice, concept, and choice in how data is shared, data is used, and data is verified. So uh, the use cases in the CCA was organized around various work streams. The use cases and tooling work stream was among the few work streams which uh, started having phenomenally en engaging con presentation from startups, businesses, individuals who just brought a fresh round of perspectives on various aspects of a citizen's journey through this system. You would recall that uh, in a lot of ways, those early days, there was a whole lot of conversation around what the journey looks like, what use workflows look like, what are the user experience, uh, design patterns, and all of that. So in our, in our case, in CCI, concepts like trust registries, verifying the verifier, or to be able to uh, understand uh, the security around verification process, local assurance communities, all brought out the need for what we call a templates governance framework. So what we did was uh, we inherited a governance framework uh, from the Sovereign Foundation. We started off with that because this was already used by the Sovereign Foundation to run the Sovereign mainnet, and it provides the identifier services. So this was a reference frame for topics and principles. Uh, we needed to do this quick, so we set up an aggressive target a timeline of 60 days in which to produce the first version of the CCI governance framework. We created specific roles like editors, primary and secondary reviewers, uh, expert reviewers, uh, and then went through cycles of week-to-week -week meetings, including sidebar conversations to be able to get us to an early first release uh, in June. So we started off somewhere around April. By the time it's June, we already had version one or two release. Now, the other thing that we did was that we also produced traditional language versions besides the English version that we had. And the interesting thing that happened is that the translation activity helped clarify some of the technical concepts and actually ended up making the language version in English much better simplified. So uh, this, the release of the version one got us to a, a feedback cycle. And one of the key feedback received from early adopters was uh, that they would prefer to remove ambiguity in the principles 
in order to create better policies. And this allowed us to create a way we can actually uh, improve on the next version. Now, I think we this all this activity that happened then and continues has allowed us to present a good set of things that we can share. Uh, the key is about the human experience. Keeping technology as something that enables the social situation rather than allowing it to dominate over the social situation. But more importantly, to be able to engage with adopters and uh, sponsors with a clear expectation that the first version is not the final version. It's not etched in stone. It would go through refactoring. It would go through refinement. It would go through changes and modifications, primarily because as we were doing all of this, the science and policy around all the pieces around the pandemic, like the immune, immunity uh, uh, status, vaccination, all of this was evolving. So this means that domain experts engage in frontline activities like we had uh, a good amount of participation from folks who were involved, engaged with the NHS. And this allowed, this was critical because it kept us on the straight path. And uh, we didn't quite get sidetracked by the, the geekery and the nerd fascination that often happens in such cases. But the most important thing that we think is that gets us going and or got us going to be able to deliver what we did is that we focused on getting the purpose and the scope correct. Now, the thing about getting that correct is to be able to evaluate all further progress in terms of whether it can be in scope or out scope. Does it serve the purpose or does it not? Does it help the direction that we chose to walk down or does it not? I think that's one of the key things that to keep in mind if you are trying to do a similar exercise. So the other thing that we ended up focusing on through all the activities is putting a spotlight on inclusion, equity, and accessibility are the principles that are included in this governance framework. Ensure that we are able to provide guidance that are, make these topics are fundamental when considering digital interventions. So we, we see that uh, and we read opinions that with digital passports, which highlight the uh, various drawbacks around these topics, including surveillance, coercion. And uh, so we need, we wanted to address topics of these topics as well with uh, by bringing in ideas around data sovereignty, data governance, data rights as they are applicable to the local jurisdictions. And uh, we, what we now see happening extensively is that digital credentials in situations that involve large ecosystems, like for instance, you, you might have heard about the Goodell Pass and the IATA and others coming together to form consortiums. Now, uh, this essentially are large digital trust ecosystems that cross boundaries. Uh, so essentially it requires a large, a, a variety of organizations to trust the issuers of these verifiable credentials and verifiable presentations and have a way of transitive trust put in. Uh, this slide is essentially a quick update on what's happening as well as a call to action. We really, really would like to have more specific uh, participations from policymakers, individuals who are involved in standard development organizations to be able to join us and uh, and contribute to this template governance framework. Now, if you are engaged in or are planning to design governance frameworks for such efforts, I think we have a number of ways to collaborate and CCA can be of help. So I do encourage you to join us. You can find us on Linux Foundation Public Health Slack. Uh, the link is here or on Twitter. Uh, you can see the Twitter handle. Or if you want to reach out to me for a conversation, I have my email address on the slide as well. And uh, yeah, that's that's what I wanted to share it as a quick update on this COVID credentials governance framework. So I'd like to thank you because you you obviously had a lot of things you could do and you chose to participate in this conversation. I do appreciate your generosity and I wish that you stay safe. And if you have questions now, I'd be happy to answer them as best as I can. So what I'm going to do is minimize this session and... Uh, sort things out quickly let's do that thanks